Hey there, reading and writing teacher friends. This is Bill McDonald, the ELAR Write Prescription Doctor. I just wanted to give you a tour of one of my most popular products that kind of works hand in hand with one of my graphic organizers, which happens to be two hands and an arm and a train. So if you have any questions, please take a moment to write down my email address that's in the upper right hand corner of your screen, the writing underscore doctor at yahoo.com. That's my website. If you decide to purchase the folders, which for about a week or so, I will include with the graphic organizers at no extra charge. So for $25, you'll get a hard copy of the 11 by 17 ELAR writing folders, which covers pretty much every single thing that your kids will do that's related to the new test design. And when I include those 25 ELAR and writing graphic organizers, it will also tie in any reading question that your students can get and strategies on how to solve them. Now, as I'm doing each part of the folder, I'll show you the part of the Crest online training for those of you that might need one or more of the trainings to kind of help you alleviate any stress or anxiety or lack of clarity that you might have in one or more of the areas i'll go ahead and keep my special price just for one more week i was going to put it for a regular price a hundred dollars per part of the five part crest training but because there's so many of you who kind of want to merge the materials and the uh, trainings, then I'll go ahead and hold on to the price. Now, if you buy two Crest trainings or more, then I will go ahead and include the graphic organizers and folders for free for no extra charge. So that means that if you buy two, you know what, I'll, I'll go ahead and do this. For anybody who buys one or more, because you're already getting a special deal on just the folders and graphic organizers by themselves for $25 plus $7.50 shipping, if you buy one or more of the Crest trainings for $50, then I will go ahead and throw in your copy of the advanced ELAR writing folders and graphic organizers and the other materials for free. There's about five or six class sets when you purchase the online press training that you'll get in addition to these folders. But I wanna to focus today mainly on the folders and the graphic organizers because as many of you saw in my, my post this morning uh, or Sunday morning, if you're watching this at some other time, there was a teacher who said she was limited on funds and budget and the district wasn't able to bring me in to work with their students. In an ideal world, I get to come work with you, but in the more ideal world, I'll get to work with your students while you observe so that you can see that the ideas that, are share, that I share with you and your students are content specific, applicable, practical, and 
even student friendly because I'm willing to model them right in front of you with your students in different group sizes, depending on the grade level, up to six hours per day. And that includes all the, all the materials and handouts uh, for your students and class sets of materials for your teachers. Uh, it's all an awesome experience that your kids will have and hopefully you too. So let's get started with the tour of the folders. And I felt like it was important that I start off by showing you just how the preliminary tests are set up for third grade so that you can see they're pretty much the same for all the grades. On the preliminary test design, you can see that here is the reading section and we'll go with the low number of points here that around 26 of the points your kids can earn in constructed short answer and multiple choice questions are 26 reading points. Your other half, about 26, if you kind of average it, will be the 10 extended essay points. And when you subtract 10 from 26, that leaves 16. So if you evenly divide your editing and revising passages that your students are going to get, two of them, then it kind of goes without saying that your kids are going to probably have about eight questions of editing and eight questions of revising. For the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, these numbers uh, go up to 56. So 28 and 28, basically, uh, half the test will be reading, half the test will be writing. As you can see here, uh, the format is going to be the same uh, for all of you on the two point questions. You're all going to get one uh, pair, two short answer reading based questions that are going to be worth a total of four points. And that's the answer to the question and the evidence that goes with it. Now, even though that is in the reading portion of the points, you need to understand that if your students don't have the ability to write complete sentences on there, if those responses are deemed to be indecipherable or illegible by the two graders, because two graders are going to grade each of those two point questions uh, and it's going to be like the old way where both graders have to put a two or a one or a zero or they are uh, the essay the short answer response limited to 475 characters is graded by the manager then we have the one 10 point and the short answer question where your students get a point for answering the question, a basic another point for giving the evidence uh, and showing where it is in the text, a third point for the develop development of the response, and another two points for the quality of the conventions. And so since it's going to be graded by two separate people, what they'll do is they will combine those two grades. So if your students get a five and a five, that's a 10. A five and a four would be a nine. A three and a three would be a six. But if the, the scores are not adjacent, meaning five, four, four, three, four, two, uh, three, two, two, one, then 
if it's a three and a one, what they did in the the previous on expository and persuasive uh, star was the third person would look at it, probably the director. And if they decided that the paper was a four, then they would just double that score and the student would get eight points. And so the only difference between the sixth grade and the fourth grade is the number of editing and revising uh, would be about nine uh, each for editing and revising on the two passages. And the number of editing and, and revising for high school, the ninth and the 10th graders would be about 11 when you do all the math because the total points for ninth and 10th grade are 64. And again, you can just go to the website uh, on the Texas Education Agency website and they will show you this preliminary um, blueprint that will start this coming year. So I wanted to make sure you knew that I wasn't shooting at the stars and hitting the moon or the sun when they came up with all of these ideas. So the first thing I wanna show you on the folders is the editing of your passage because you're going to get two of them, third through 10th grade and your essay, the extended essay. When we're editing the passages, those are the three types of questions that your students can receive. When it says, says change, it'll be cups, one of those first four red words, capitalization, usage, punctuation, or spelling. If it's number two or number three, when they, use, when they use the word correct or best, it will be either a Roth, which is, as you can see here, a run-on or a fragment, or if it's sentences plural, it usually means that the first sentence is a complete sentence and the second one is a fragment, or that the first one is a fragment and the second one is a sentence. Most of your posters have cups with one S. The reason that many of your students are struggling with editing when it comes to these is because we need to add that other S and in the graphic organizer, you're going to see that I have a third S. Let me show that to you now. These guys here in the middle of the palm are for penmanship and PC superhero skills iron man is open where his hands are not uh, having his fingers touch so when you write with a pencil or a pen on a paper or type on a pc letters don't touch so we'll call that iron man when you write on a pencil or a paper with an or pen and the letters are touching, that's called cursive, which we'll call Iron Man. And so it's important uh, if you do Crest Online Part 1, there's a lot of things that I'm going to share with you that start with an S that are critical to your student's skills when it comes to the spacing, the size, the syllables, the shift button, the space bar, the shape, the sound. So here's the editing graphic work. And all it is is a hand. So your students could draw a hand. This C is for, this, this fingernail is for cap, as in capitalization, where you underline capitals, proper nouns. The U is for usage, where you use Spider-Man's head to connect a subject to a predicate and decide is the subject singular, one, or plural, more than one. And then you decide is the predicate, past tense, present tense, or future tense. If it's punctuation, we'll think of the yellow punctuations as the slowing down ones, such as commas, colons, 
semicolons, apostrophes, contractions, and opening and closing quotations. The stop signs, and these are all written here in the punctuation section, you can see them there, red and yellow, are periods, exclamations, and question marks. When you talk about spelling, there's the pictures for spelling, and there they are on the spelling finger, where you teach them to see the word, say it, hear and listen to the sounds and the syllables, to think in their brain about the spelling rule. If they don't know it in their brain, they can look it up in the book called the dictionary or the thesaurus if we're looking for synonyms. And hopefully they'll write the right answer. And then that last finger is that last S, sentence boundaries, where the little boy's running or run-ons or running into a wall, getting what I call reader's whiplash for fragments. So that would be basically part one of Crest Online Training if you need guidance, or you can just use the folders and kind of work your way through it on your own if you're experienced with editing. Part two of PE, Passages and Essays, is revising. So if editing is improving the conventions, the grammar, revising is improving the development and the organization by using the acronym ARM, where we add green, remove red, replace green, or move content around. What do we move for passages? One word, a phrase, a transition, a sentence. <sighs> Some idea, combining uh, is moving because you're not adding and removing, you're just putting them together. Removing also means deleting, but you can use arm. Notice that it doesn't say as for substitute because it's never been used on a star test. When you're practicing, looking at things that are in a certain sequence, you can use another arm called actor remember more or a third arm called for setting where you draw pictures, uh, where you do artists remember more. So in the sequencing, you have your kids act out the story, the play, the poem, the literary nonfiction, and in the setting, you can draw pictures if they were talking about imagery. That would be part two. And you'll receive a of the Crest training and you'll receive a special root beer bottle with all the keywords, the, the questions that they can possibly ask your kids and Keep in mind that on your short answer and your extended essay questions, three of them, two short answer and one extended essay, you'll be wanting to teach them to add the uh, answer to the question, to add the evidence, to add the location of where it's at for the short answer, and then to also add the explanation and the examples that you're going to use to tie all the answers together. In fourth grade, they call it the central idea. Third, fourth, and fifth. The sixth, seventh, and eighth are going to call it the controlling idea for extended essays. And the ninth and tenth will call it the thesis statements. You have to add certain things. But whenever your students do certain things wrong, you'll teach them to remove something and just leave it out or replace it with some content. And notice that it also says sentences. So you might ask kids to remove sentences or perhaps an entire paragraph if whatever they wrote does not tie in with what their question is asking them on the short answer or the extended essay response. So that's the upper right hand. Let's go to what is part three on Crest, the short constructed responses. Uh, all of reading students from third through 10th grade are going to get two of these. 
but in science and social studies and biology, most likely U.S. history, they're also going to get some short answer responses that will be worth two points and will be, I have them set up so that your students can um, basically use um, the red light to think of the question. And in my final version of these folders, this is, the, this is a um, laminated one so that I can show you when I get to part three, how it works. Uh, the red light is also what is the answer because your answer red light has to tie to your question red light. And if we're only gonna get a two, then I change these two green ones, the where and the why is it the answer and the evidence either with or without quotation marks because when I looked at the samples, they did not have uh, quotation marks on some of them and some of them did. so. The colors that you'll see when you get yours uh, as a digital or hard copy, this part will stay red. I change this yellow to red so that they understand in order to get my first point, my answer must relate to the question, whatever the topic is about. In order to get to the second point, there I must try to give you where the evidence is at and the actual evidence that is the justification for my answer. This left-hand portion is all the different ways that your students can be asked constructed type responses. Now, I went ahead and put this one in here. If it's regular multiple choice, uh, paper and pencil tests, which you're still gonna be taking some most likely, Remind your kids that they'll probably be seeing A, B, C, D for odd and F, G, H, J for even. But on most PC online tests, uh, especially the real one, it's pretty much just going to be A, B, C, D, whether the question numbers are even or odd. And I just want to remind you that in spite of all of this, uh, this, um, constructed and short answer and extended, all of these non-multiple choice formats right here on this left-hand side, it's only supposed to be 25% of the test. So what are all these other boxes? 75% of the test will still be multiple choice, this one box. So I encourage you highly you spend 75% of your time just working on regular multiple choice because only 25% of the test approximately is going to be short answer, extended essay response, or um, constructed response. So uh, part three, just so I don't get anybody confused, part three of the CREST training is the constructed responses how to answer questions in all these different formats. And so I'll get into those now. Um, and I want you to notice I have a red line intentionally there. If you're a reading teacher, the only kinds of constructed responses that you'll get are the ones above the red line. If it's below the red line, your students can get these in math, in science, in social studies, and they can also get the ones above the red line. But just so you know, if you're a reading writing teacher, they'll only get these kinds of questions. So I went ahead and got, I'm gonna put on my glasses so I can see a little bit better. Don't make fun of my Clark Kent glasses. So I'll, I'll just do third grade, but you can kind of go over this yourself uh, on the, new samples um so the first one that they gave you in the sample it says multi-select which means that there's two different answers so it's worth two points multi-select here we go and i'm using a permanent marker and as you can see it's more fine point and so as your students are 
taking a test, they can check on this folder what type of answer that the question is so that they can show you that they're understanding the different question types they're, they're getting. And so as you're going through these, I highly suggest that you keep track of what kinds of questions you're asking your kids so that they can get used to over the, the whole year's time being asked, hopefully every single one of these types um, in reading and these types below here as well, if you teach uh, math, science, social studies, biology, US history, etc. So let's kind of look at some of the other ones. Uh, the second one they showed was hot text. It's basically cite evidence by selecting highlighted text in a sentence, a paragraph, or, an, or extended reading. The next one, short constructed response. So that's the short answer where there's the answer, basically. Uh, Snell wanted big text to be a surprise when it was placed at the fair. And again, it's yellow and green, but if you're only gonna give two points, then I would probably say so we can be consistent. Let's call this the red and we'll call this the yellow. And that way, when we get to the extended essay, we'll go from red for the answer, yellow, to the evidence and green to the extension. You're limited to 475 characters, not including spaces. And it states in paragraph eight, that's the where, that the workers were not allowed to tell anyone what they were building. That's either the exact words or a paraphrase of what it said in paragraph eight based on the answer that the student gave. So constructed response that is up here and because it had two parts, what's the answer and where's the evidence, they will get two points for that. Multi-part, part A. part A was option A and part B was option C. And notice that on multi-part, the student must choose part A, option A to receive partial credit. In other words, if only part B is correct, but not part A, they won't get any points. And so you have to get this first one correct in order to get at least one point. And so multi-part, as you look through here, there is your multi-part. And so as you can see here in my guide, the answer to part B is dependent on part A. And so if part A is not correct, your students won't get any points on that kind of a question. Another multi-part was given. You can see here, again, on multi-parts, it was what they're worth two points. So I'm gonna put another little tally mark there, just so you can see that they gave two third, third grade examples. And you can kind of take this once you get your folders and go through all of the sample questions to see what kind of questions did they give my kids? The, Next one was another hot text. Citing evidence by selecting highlighted text in a sentence. And so they basically will grab a little sentence in a paragraph uh, as the correct answer. They're basically asking your kids which one of these sentences is the answer and as you can see that the hot text there is only worth one point. Another short constructed response is there for an example. Um, again, it could be, you can either use red, red for the question, yellow for the answer or green for the where, or you can do like I'm gonna be doing for both short answer and extended where red is the question, the red light, for the answer, the yellow light for the where and the uh, evidence, and then the green light for the expl explanation. So you can see there the yellow answer. The answer was 
In, why was imagery used? It was used to personify the pants and treat them like a human. Uh, the speaker talks in the poem. The speaker in the poem talks to the poem like he does in the last few lines of the poem. So it doesn't, you don't have to name the lines. You can see it doesn't have quotation marks. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So it's important that you notice that um, when you're having your kids choose their responses um, up here, you can see here they didn't put it in quotation marks either for that short, short constructed response. So that's two examples of short constructed, short answer responses where they give the answer and then they say the location and either they give the evidence uh, either with or without quotations and they can paraphrase or use the words that are actually in that sentence or that part of the passage. So the last one that I wanna show you just for the example for this part before we get into that, that is the extended. Now, this is the last part, um, extended essay, okay? What, and this is the way I have it set up uh, on the final version of the folder. What is the question? Wow stands for what original words from the question can I use for my response? Well, that means that you can use the words from the question as part of your response. But if you're using the acronym race where you're telling every single student to restate the question, that's formulaic and it's very repetitive. If the reader is having to see all of your students restate the exact words of the question over because they already know the question, they want the answer. So level two of WOW says, what other words could I use besides the actual words? Because as you saw in the answers, they weren't using the exact words from the question in the response examples that they give us. And for the higher level students, the WOW could be what original way could I answer? And in extended essay, they call it a central idea in third through through fifth, a controlling idea statement in sixth through eight, or a thesis statement in ninth and 10th grade. That's how you get basically to one land. The organization, organize your essay. You want to be able to figure out where are you going to prove your text? What line or lines, scene or scenes, stanza or stanzas, sentence or sentences, section or sections, paragraph or paragraphs. Why is it the answer? And you can give me the evidence, either with or without quotation marks, uh, either the exact evidence or the paraphrasing. And this is how you get to two land. And then how do you get to three land? You have to explain your examples and your evidence by doing what I call GPS, by getting pretty specific using what I call the six W's plus one. The six W's are who, what, when, where, why, which, and the plus one is the how. I, I would model for you um, in part five of the training, how do I explain and explode my response by giving depth uh, instead of just giving you the evidence, I've got to explain how the evidence that I'm giving you ties in with my idea, my answer, and the topic, okay? Something that I have on my folders, because they haven't told us yes or no yet, closure. You might want to have some way and to wrap it, wrap up your answer, and I have shoes with laces where, where, where your students can think, how can I tie all of this together? And Ties can be, uh, did I answer the topic that the question was about with my idea and my evidence and the way I explained it with specific supporting sentences? Did I take the time be before I finished to take my paper to the ER, the editing and revising room, uh, editing and revising emergency room, editing with cups with two S's and revising with arm. So 
that's the top portion. And as you can see in the example that they gave third grade, the answer, uh, it, it said, explain the relationship between the pants, the, the poet and the pants and how the relationship is developed throughout the poem. So one example that they gave is the, the poet or speaker has a special connection to the pants and treats them as if they were a best friend. So a special connection is the first part of the idea. Treating them like a best friend is the second part. So then you would have to give evidence. Where do you see a special connection? And how do you uh, see them as best friends? Because, um, because the question was two parts. If you look here, the first part was uh, the, what's the relationship? Well, how is it developed? The relationship is that they have a connection. How do they, how is it developed? Well, they become best friends. And so you'll have to look for examples of things that are happening between the poet and the pants that show their connection, their friendship getting stronger and stronger. And you have a total of 2,300 characters, not including spaces to answer that. And two different readers can give you up to five points for the answer, the evidence, the development, and up to two points for the conventions. So this folder also has examples of figurative language on the bottom half because they're going to be asking your giving your students passages with a lot of figurative expressions and so it's probably great to expose them to your kids and then the dialogue on the lower left is because on the editing portion they're going to be asking your students a lot of questions that have to do with conversations between characters in a passage and just as a reminder, the editing and revising passages will be shorter, but I have several different ways that dialogue can be thrown at your kids. So I would suggest that you practice all of those ways. Now, when you're doing the response, when you look inside the folder, you see that there's like a little mini thesaurus of lots of overused words and better words that you can use to replace them. And of course, the older the student, the the higher level vocabulary that you would want to get because your word choices are going to infect, affect the grade. Um, it's also important to notice that I have the print and cursive alphabet. The cursive is only there in case you decide to allow your students to still practice writing their responses with pencil or pen on a piece of paper. And the print is there to help your kids understand uh, which um, keys to push on their keyboard when they need to push shift to change the size and the shape of the letters and when they can just type the letter itself. So that's the folder. And then just real quick, um, the, the graphic organizer is set up to go from red to yellow, to green, like I mentioned to you. What is the question? This is the opposite side of the hand that I showed you earlier. And I have two eyes because as you saw in that third grade question, it was basically what was their relationship and how did it develop? Well, I need one idea uh, in third through fifth. Your idea is called the central idea. Fifth, six through eighth, it's called a controlling idea. And ninth and 10th, it's called the uh, thesis statement. And then you transition to get a two. What is your evidence? Let's take the red light to the yellow light. What is your evidence? Where, where is your evidence that you're planning? Take me to a certain location. And then what is the actual evidence? Um, so basically your first point the answer, your second point, 
A is where is your evidence? And part B is uh, how to, uh, what is the actual evidence, either with or without quotations, act, uh, exact words or paraphrase. And the cool thing about B for body is uh, in the body, if you want to go from a two to a three, the, the development, there's a little D there and another D on the bottom. Don't forget to develop your evidence portion, but also develop your explanation portion because in order to get a three, in order to go from the yellow light to the green light, your students actually have to explain their answer and express themselves, hopefully with higher vocabulary where they tie the explanation, the evidence, and their idea all together to make sense with the question. And so the C at the end here is, do you need closure? If they ask for a conclusion, there needs to be one. They haven't clarified because I asked the director of writing, or of reading, sorry, uh, um, if they were going to have a requirement of a conclusion like they did for star expository and persuasive. And he said that they, ha they hadn't decided that yet, that uh, in order, instead of dissecting every single question I asked him, he said to wait until the rubrics and the scoring guides came out. So I would suggest that you have your kids do some sort of closure, but then to work on the conventions, the grammar of the response, C, and the content, improving the content by adding, removing, replacing, or moving things. And so since shoes, there's two of them, you can tell your kids, maybe have one or two shoes where you tie everything together, wrap it all up. And when I say that, I do not mean to restate or repeat everything that you've already written. If your introduction is the appetizer, then your evidence and where it's at would be your meat, your explanation would be your vegetables and your closure and the way you take your paper to the emergency room of editing revising would be like your dessert. So this would be worth the fourth and the fifth point if your students do all of that. And keeping in mind, the closure part is still in question, but you do want to improve the content by adding, removing, replacing, or moving things around before you submit your final answer or you want to improve the conventions, the grammar, by remembering to do cups, capitalization, usage, punctuation, spelling. So the only thing left is the reading and revising graphic organizer. And so you see another hand here, and, and I want you to not get scared, but there's a lot of words here. And what I did was basically I took a hand and I thought to myself, if they ask a question about an entire paragraph or an entire passage, a selection, a poem, then I'm going to use a hand. And you can see an eyeball in there. If they ask questions about the summary of something or a main idea or a focus or what something is mainly about, a topic sentence, all of that is inside the paragraph section. Sometimes they might ask you for inferencing. And so there'll be a box question or a sentence and they have to infer. So since your hand has hair on it, you can put your finger right here and say in. And then if you hold, watch my hand over here, infer means to read between the lines and so inferencing is basically saying okay if certain content is on the lines on those sentences inside those paragraphs or inside those sections then inferencing is what can i infer my reading between the lines or if my pinky is my last part of my paragraph or my passage 
drawing a conclusion would be basically saying the pinky is not there. I need to draw a pinky or draw a conclusion. And um, in revising and reading, I've divided the bottom part. There's an arm and a hand. And so if they're asking questions, and apologize for the glare on the on the light, I just wanted to use the laminator one so I could check off all those um, constructed responses. Whether it's reading or revising, reading is understanding the content, and revising is adding, removing, replacing, or moving the content. So what I suggest that you teach your students to do is, instead of always reading the passages first on revising and reading, look for questions that are only about a word and do those first. That way they can use their dictionary or they can see it in context. Is the question only about one phrase or a line to understand or improve? Are they just asking you to change the order or check the order? Or are they asking you to combine sentences to put them together? Is there what we might call text structure? Are you having to figure out the relationship between one sentence to the next? The teeter-totter is where I get to practice that. The cause, why, reason, read, is related to the effect or the result, read. The action and reaction of the teeter-totter is blue. The conflict versus the resolution is red. The paired passages are, or you can say, how are these passages the same? And how are these two passages different? And there's gonna be some questions that are just about one passage, this selection over here. And there's some other questions that will be just about this one and then some that will ask you to make a comparison, a couple of questions. So it's sort of like saying, I have a pair of shoes here, and what are the answers to this question? What are the answers to questions about this passage? What are the answers to questions about this passage? And then the, little, the middle laces are, how do they all tie together? Going up a little bit higher, if you add, remove, or replace a whole sentence, you're usually doing it in the context of the entire paragraph. And as you can see, the last part of the, the, the graphic organizer for the reading is there, there are two rows of P's that are reading and revising related uh, keywords and terms. And there's a, a section called ties where everything in a passage, regardless of genre, ties together and so even though this does look wordy and lengthy by the time the year is over your students will be able to understand that there's a lot of reading concepts that are in this hand and this arm that will be easily answered and again this reading revising graphic organizer is included uh, again, the train is for the short answer for the red and yellow, extended response for the five to 10 point questions, the eight, nine or 11 editing questions are here. The eight, nine or 11 revising questions are either here on the bottom or questions uh, about an entire paragraph using a hand or an entire passage using hand because what's usually missing is they'll say the topic sentence is missing or the topic sentence that's there is too vague which the topic sentence can be the thumb so they're saying remove this topic sentence and replace it with one that's more specific so the lower the words are on this arm and hand, the lower level, the question types tend to be the higher the level on the hand, the higher level, because if your students are having to answer a question about a whole paragraph or a whole passage, 
those kinds of questions are always harder than a question that's only about one sentence, one phrase, two sentences. And so that's why I felt like I needed to add a scaffolded graphic organizer that allows your students to go from simple to complex. So that's basically the summary of the advanced folder of English language arts, reading and writing, and how it works, how it gels with the graphic organizer. So in basic format, you're editing, your kids who just need a, to have a, a hand. Cups, capitalization, usage, punctuation, spelling, and sentence boundaries called run-ons and fragments. In revising, it's arm. What do I need to add, remove, replace, or move in the context of this paragraph or this passage or sometimes just this word in a sentence or this phrase in the sentence? The reading is saying, here is the content and I, even, I, need, I need to understand the content in the context of an entire paragraph one, or an entire passage, or a paired passage to different hands, and then they ask questions about this passage, questions about this passage, and they do the teeter totter uh, text structure. How do the, let's do a compare contrast, or let's just do, why did the character do something? That's a, uh, they're, they're saying, if they're saying why, that means the cause is missing. And so your kids have to transition and say, okay, well, they've given me the effect, what the character did, what they're asking is why they did it. If there's a conflict, well, guess what? There's a rising action to a climax, to a transition, to a falling action, to a resolution, to a conclusion. There's a same transition different positive transition negative positive transition negative good transition bad so there's all kinds of different text structures that your kids can study and i just thought let me teach something that's really hard text structures moving from how sentences relate to each other, how paragraphs relate to each other, how passages relate and contrast to each other uh, using a teeter transition totter, C transition saw. And if you could actually get access to a teeter totter at your school's playground, you can actually take your students outside uh, if they're, they're still allowing them because a lot of schools are doing away with uh, things like swings and teeter-totters uh, because kids are getting hurt all the time. And, but they're keeping these fancy jungle gyms where the kids are getting hurt even more. One of my students uh, almost lost his leg by falling off a jungle gym, so I'm not really sure why they're getting rid of the teeter-totter. So you might have to kind of just pretend you can kind of sort of build one by in the classroom by having maybe a brick, a long board in the classroom. And then you have your kids practice going from the cause to the transition to the effect by kind of putting things on the board or sitting on the opposite sides of the board where you make your own classroom teeter-totter seesaw. So anyway, that's the basics of the folder and the graphic organizers. And when you watch me on all my videos, that's what I'll be using uh, to make reading a lot easier. And basically, yes, the folders have a lot of information on them. But you have to keep in mind that what I did was that 
I wanted to make sure that anything that I had to learn throughout the year and by the end of the year, I wanted it all in one place, regardless of what kind of question was being asked, I can figure out how to answer that question at some point during the year using either A, the writing folders, or B, the graphic organizer, or C, a combination of the writing folder and the graphic organizers to answer any questions, test questions. So message me if you have any questions, email me at writing underscore doctor at yahoo.com if I can help you in any way uh, with a training or if you have questions getting to the website, uh, you can message me. I'll, uh, if, I'll send each of you this video so you can kind of look it over yourself and decide if you feel like it's something that you want to add uh, to your teaching tools for reading and writing for this year. I feel like it's very content specific, that it's very directly tied to our Texas test. So you would go to that website that's there in the upper uh, right hand corner of my screen and you'll uh, go there or you just message me and I can send you the link uh, to the folders or to the Crest training. Remember that Crest part one, if you wanna write some of these down, Crest part one is editing, part two is revising, part three is the constructed type, the little boxes that were to the left, part four is the short answers, and part five is the extended essay responses. By the time I'm finished, I'm just wrapping up part two. Uh, we've done editing and we're almost done with the, with the revising now. When we're finished with all five parts, it'll be close to 100 hours of training that's recorded online for you like you're seeing here. And it will be yours forever along with the digital and the hard copies of the materials. Um, but if you're one of those teachers who's pretty strong, you're not new to reading or writing and you kind of got this all figured out, then you might just want to add the folders uh, and then you get the graphic organizers for free over this next week. So up to you, think about it, get back to me as soon as you can and God bless you guys and have a great week.